extending it to law enforcement officers, real law enforcement officers, because, you know, of course, the TSA are not law enforcement officers. We have a police chief who is going to the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association meeting, and he was singled out at the Albuquerque, New Mexico airport. We're going to let him tell you his story and what happened to him. Police Chief Harger, I really appreciate you taking a stand for the Constitution. I'm so sorry to see that this has happened. It is absolutely amazing for us from this perspective, but could you lay out exactly what happened in the sequence of events when you went to the Albuquerque airport on your way to the CSPOA convention? Uh, absolutely. Um, so myself and retired Sheriff Rene Rivetta, who was at that time serving as the deputy chief for my agency, we were in route to attend this conference in Las Vegas, and uh, due to former investigations that I've been involved in, a um, very high-profile case, my name was changed legally through the courts, and it was sealed under record. And so I have two different names. Uh, I haven't flown in years by choice because of the conduct of TSA. Mm -hmm. But for this particular event, I had really had no choice. And so I told uh, Sheriff Rivetta, let's go talk to a TSA supervisor, explain you know our circumstances, because my biggest concern was regarding my driver's license. The expiration date had just expired. So we go upstairs and we speak to a supervisor. She was very cordial. We explained to our circumstances, and uh, she said, not a problem. It's within one year of expiration, so you can fly. There's no issue. I said, you know, thank you so much. We go downstairs. We go to the ticket counter, present identification again. We're, present, we're you know, provided with our tickets and our boarding passes. We book in our luggage, and then here comes... Uh, a young officer from the Albuquerque Aviation Police, um, and, and he's being quite stern in his demeanor and so forth. He says, I need to speak with you guys. Okay. So myself and Sheriff Rivetta goes off to the side with this individual and another officer, and we speak with him. He demands to see identification. Uh, we provide him with identification, and uh, he starts questioning us. I said, you know, what's going on? And he says, well, you were, you were named as a suspicious person. Mm -hmm. I said, really? I said, you know, what is so suspicious about me? He said, did you go upstairs? And I said, yeah, I did. I, I spoke with the TSA person up there. But what were you discussing with them? I said, I had a question about my, my flight itinerary and, and any problems that may arise from an expiration date and so forth. I don't recall the exact verbiage I used, but that was the gist of the conversation. And so ultimately, um, I finally said, you know, am, am I being charged with something? Am I free to go? He gave us our information back, and we were sent on our way. And... Um, we, we go upstairs through the TSA screening. Uh, Sheriff Rivetta was allowed right, right through. When I approached, uh, the lady asked me where I was going. And I tell her that I was going to Las Vegas. And she then asked, what was my business there? And I, I made the statement that that's private, and I kept walking. So then I get up to the, um, the scanner, and I put all my stuff through the scanner. I went through the metal detector, and I was forced to go through it three times. Uh, I didn't have any metal on me. You know, that I was aware of, but it kept going off. Nonetheless, I get through the thing, get all my stuff back, and I start walking towards the turnstile, and I'm approached by a man in a dark suit who flaps open a wallet and shuts it and puts it back in his pocket. I don't know who he was with. He didn't ever showed me a card or nothing like that. I don't have anything from him. He was not wearing a uniform, but he claimed to be a federal investigator. Those mm. were his words. And so he want, demands to see identification, and I tell him, you know, we've already been through this. I've already presented my identification at least three times to, to various officials. What's going on? And he told me that I was a person of interest, that I was uh, listed as being suspicious. Hmm. So I, I comply. I give him my credentials, and um, he, he really just sort of belabored the point, and I finally just asserted my First Amendment rights, my Fourth Amendment rights, and it really uh, upset him. You could see it in his demeanor. Ultimately, I gave him a scenario. I said, you know, sir, the way you're treating me, I said, how would you like it if I were to treat you that way? And I, I said, just for example, you come through my jurisdiction. I don't have probable cause. I don't have reasonable suspicion. There's nothing suspicious about you, but I just pull you over and say, I stopped you because you're suspicious. Mm -hmm. And you asked me, well, what's suspicious about me? And I, I went through this whole scenario, and I said, you wouldn't appreciate that very much, would you? And he said, I'm paid to be suspicious. I said, really? You're paid to be suspicious of law enforcement officers? I said, I will remember that the next time I pull over a TSA agent, that they are paid to be suspicious of me, a cop. And well, in they, other words, I was pointing out the idiosyncrasy of what he was saying. They're, they're paid to treat everyone as if we are guilty. 
They're trained to treat us all as terrorists, even though, as we just reported, they allowed the Muslim Brotherhood to get a VIP pass when they came here. So you're, you're Al-Qaeda, you're suspicious just because you're an American. But, but go ahead, tell us what happened then after uh, you, did anything happen or we, at that point you were allowed to get onto the plane? Well, he, he starts closing distance on me, becoming increasingly more hostile, making statements that you don't cop an attitude with me, do you understand? Uh -oh. so he's speaking to the chief of police as though I am, I'm a convicted felon on the street who, who's in the process of committing some crime. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the aviation police sort of got between us and uh, allowed us to be on our way. And we did. We got, uh, we'd stopped off at our, at, our, at our gate. We got a, uh, a jug of orange juice, was, was just getting some refreshments. And a person in plain clothes walks up and takes our picture and walks off. Oh, and I really? thought, that is, that is just so odd. So we get on our plane. I had no carry-on. Once we land, we get our baggage. My baggage had been searched. Huh. They turned on my laptop computer, attempted to access my laptop computer. Wow. And, you know, I, I, I thought that was suspicious. And so we go to this thing. I didn't know what I was getting into when I went to this Constitutional Sheriff's and Peace Officers Association meeting. I knew very little about it. But once I got there, my eyes were opened. I saw a group of men and women, law enforcement, decorated law enforcement officers from all over the country, painstakingly constructing documents to help preserve our American way of life. Mm -hmm. Men, grown men, with tears rolling down their face, grieving over what was happening to our country. And I realized I'm onto something here. This is bigger than all of us. This is about our God-given rights. And so I signed on. I got on board wholeheartedly. And I left feeling refreshed. And so once I left, I get to... Um, uh, I get to the airport, no problems going through Vegas. I did refuse to go through the uh, nude scanner x-ray machine. Uh, they, they advised me they would have to pat me down, including my genitals and anus. <laughs> I told them, do not probe me. Uh, do not do anything inappropriate. And so the, the guy patted me down. It was quite limited. And we were allowed to, to land here in, in Albuquerque. The moment I got on the ground and turned on my, my cell phone, my department-issued cell phone, I had a message from the Sandoval County Sheriff's Department. I made contact with Lieutenant Benelli, who stated that my law enforcement credentials with the Sheriff's Department were being revoked. So I'm cross-commissioned. I have mm -hmm. dual authority. Mm -hmm. So that dual authority was being revoked by the sheriff, and uh, it was really no reason as to why. Now, if I didn't already state this, I'm, I'm going to restate it if I did, while in the airport in Albuquerque, and, and having this confrontation with this unethical, unconstitutional TSA agent, he made the statement to me, I know people in your district, and I'm going to make some phone calls. Well, he, he lived up to his word. He contacted Sheriff Doug Wood of the Sandoval County Sheriff's Department, made his allegations. Now, the key thing to remember is uh, he's not Sandoval County has nothing to do with Bernalillo County, which is where the airport is housed. So this, this he had no jurisdiction over this issue. It was unethical for a lot of reasons, but... Sheriff Wood then made a complaint to my agency, and I was called in on my day off, placed on administrative leave, ordered to collect all handguns, badges, commission cards, uniforms, equipment from my officers, and then to report for a town hall meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. Wow. You know, what you experienced in this trip, you saw where this is all headed, because the TSA is the tip of the spear on tyranny. You saw arbitrary power being exercised by these people treating everyone as if they are a criminal suspect without any cause. And, and then you go to this convention and you see sheriffs who understand where this is going. I've talked to law enforcement against prohibition as retired uh, prosecutors and sheriffs and police chiefs who have come out against prohibition because they've seen the corruption. And you have seen the corruption of tyranny and the suspension of due process that we all go through when we travel. And now, of course, they're rolling the TSA out. It is the Travel Security, you know, Transportation Security Association. It's not just airports. They're rolling it out everywhere. And they're rolling it out at the Super Bowl this weekend. They're going to be everywhere in everybody's jurisdiction. And how do we roll this back? Well, I can tell you that if I'm not removed from my position, they will not be in my jurisdiction. I won't allow it. My citizens are not going to be subjected to unreasonable searches and seizures, unlawful detentions, pretended legislation. It's not going to happen in my jurisdiction if I'm left in office. Now, my personal feelings are 
uh, until the people recognize that the power lies within the Constitution and within them to stand up and do something about this, when people nullify this pretended legislation, when they refuse to submit, who's Whose pants is TSA going to stick their hands down if everyone says, you're, you're not doing that to me? Yes. Find someone else. Are, are they going to probe each other? Are they going to grope one another? Well, what they did the first year that uh, it was the first Thanksgiving after they put all the naked body scanners in, we started organizing an opt-out campaign, and that started going through the web. It looked like it was picking up a lot of momentum. And so what they did was they just shut down all of the scanners, all of the searching procedures on the busiest travel day of the year because they didn't want to see people opting out and shutting the system down. So we do have power. And one of the things that people can do is to support the Constitutional Sheriffs and Police Officers Association that... Sheriff Mack has. He's got a legal defense fund for you. Is there anything that we can do for you other than when I talked to you initially, you said that you would like prayer, that you were not seeking out the spotlight. You're not trying to be the tip of the spear on this. And obviously it was just your first exposure to the organization. But is there anything that people can do directly to help you? You know, I would I would love to see, see people first and foremost uh, hit their knees and, and, and intercede on my behalf. I mean that sincerely. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, write your own uh, elected officials, whether they be elected chiefs or elected sheriffs, elected uh, governors, senators, whatever the case may be, and voice your opinions and let them know you don't want to be subjected to the same thing that these other people are being subjected to. The true victims in this uh, matter is, is my citizens within my village. My heart goes out to them. We only have a, a meager 252 citizens. It's a historic village. Bless their heart, 125 of them signed a petition showing their solidarity for our police department and our efforts to clean up our town. Wow. And that, that means the world to me, and no one can ever take that away. They might take away my job, but they won't take away uh, the fact that I have the support of law-abiding citizens who want to be left alone. And, you know, yes. at the end of the day, that's all I think anyone wants, is just to be left alone. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, they don't want people getting into their business and telling them how to live. I, I can't tell you, Police Chief, how much that means to people. We are tired of being seen as the enemy by our own government. Uh, the, the same sort of thing that you experienced at the airport. We're experiencing that everywhere. We experience it not just at the airport. Unfortunately, we experience it on the streets most often from our various police departments. We see these reports coming in all the time from across the country. I can't tell you how much we appreciate what you've done and the integrity of standing up for the Constitution, doing something that controversial. It shouldn't be controversial, but uh, we hope that people will support the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, and we hope that people will support you in prayer, and you have our prayer tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Police Chief. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So we wanted to talk to Sheriff Mack and find out what this controversial political organization is that trains peace officers and sheriffs to respect the Constitution. So here's Sheriff Mack. Well, Sheriff, lay this out for us exactly what happened to Police Chief Harger as he's coming to the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association meeting. This is literally the TSA getting hold of a sheriff, a buddy, going behind his back, a back groom backdoor deal, firing a good, honest, Christian, constitutional chief of police who was a, the only thing he did wrong during the time he left town to the time he got back was to attend a constitutional convention with the CSPLA. And this is the reason we had this meeting, was one, to establish a resolution to put the federal government on notice that they're not going to do anything like this in our areas. Mm -hmm. We now have a resolution. You've got to post this on Infowars.com. We have it. We have eight things that these sheriffs, we have 41 public officials, now 42, and it's counting. We get more every day. But after this conference, the sheriffs and chiefs of police and peace officers and county commissioners and everybody who attended this, there's about 75 people, all agreed that this was the right thing to do, that we were going to put the IRS on notice, we're going to put the federal government on notice, that they're not going to be able to commit crimes in our jurisdictions anymore. Yes. And now we get this blowback and this this happening to one of our officers. We've been praying and praying and fighting and praying and fighting and praying so that these sheriffs and this kind of chief of police would stand for principles of freedom, stand for their oath of office. We now have this happening it's starting, and this is a peaceful res revolution. It's a peaceful solution, and we've got to have everybody on board, or we're not going to make it.
We've Absolutely. got to have your help. I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's time for people to take a stand. They want to know what to do.